at over 100 degrees. But the heat doesn't fully penetrate the surface. It's cooler, just one inch down. So the kangaroos dig in and chill out during the burning heat of the daylight hours. In the unforgiving outback, it's either adapt or perish beneath the sun. Animals around the globe have evolved bizarre strategies for coping with extreme heat. In Africa's Sahara Desert, the fennec fox is one of the smallest canines on the planet with some of the biggest ears. All the better for dissipating heat and tuning into the subtle movements of its prey. Deserts can endure vast swings in temperature from day to night and season to season. Here in the Sahara, temperatures can plunge 36 degrees. The pale fox holes up in underground burrows by day and only comes out at night. Temperatures here can vary from 120 degrees on a summer day to below freezing on a winter night. So only the most adaptable creatures survive here. The nighttime Sahara is filled with unexpected animals. Some desert toads eke out a living in oasis ponds. Others burrow underground for months at a time. The toad skin is vulnerable to desert extremes, but the scorpion's hard waxy shell is designed to minimize water loss. A wide variety of life defies the Sahara's harshest extremes. But it's a mystery how anything can survive here. It's the driest desert on planet Earth, the Atacama on the coast of Chile. Virtually rainless, it's 50 times drier than California's Death Valley. These are South America's camels, guanacos, and they're masters of desert survival. Guanacos can get all the water they need from their food alone. Cactus flowers are a good source of water. But here, it only rains a mere fraction of an inch a year. Barely enough to sustain any plant. So, how can anything grow without water? The secret is the cold Humboldt Ocean Current that travels from Antarctica alongside the South American coast. The water cools the hot air above it, generating a daily river of fog known as the Kamanchaka. Sweeping inland, the fog settles as dew, as much as two gallons per square yard. Precious, life-saving water in a bone-dry land of death. Fed by the fog, moisture-loving lichens swaddle the cacti. They soak up water like a sponge and keep the Atacama alive.
Further inland, the air is too warm for its moisture to condense. This slender strip of land is one of the few parts of the Atacama where creatures thrive, thanks to the fog. But sun, water, and wind don't always bring salvation. They also build storm systems. Under perfect conditions, they can create monsters of epic proportion. Still, some of the planet's fiercest storms don't shed a single drop of rain. And these killers can show up when you least expect them. The Sahara in northern Africa is the world's largest desert, almost as big as the United States. This is the staging ground for Earth's most ferocious sandstorms. They appear without warning, raging at speeds of up to 90 miles an hour, turning day to night in a flash. The sand and dust thrown into the atmosphere sweep across the planet. It's hard to imagine anything could survive it. But life endures even this extreme. In the Sahara, dromedary camels soldier through a sandstorm, protected by double rows of eyelashes and nostrils that can clamp to a mere slit, allowing air in, but keeping most of the sand out. The wind scours everything in its path. For insects, each grain must feel like a missile. Armored, scaly skins protect most reptiles from the stinging sand. But when the going gets too tough, sidewinders just disappear. Compared to the Sahara, the islands off Bahrain look as lifeless as the moon. Yet for an enormous colony of seabirds, this is a favorite island escape. Every year, on a few patches of desert in the Persian Gulf, up to 200,000 Socotra cormorants gather to breed. These are the largest colonies of these birds in the world. In the sweltering heat, only vigorous panting keeps the birds from fatal overheating. It's a harsh place to rear young. A hungry gull can swoop in at any moment and gobble up a helpless chick. And there's nowhere to hide on this island of feathers and sand. But with no food in sight, how do hungry cormorants get by in this barren landscape? The answer lies beneath their feet. These sands contain minerals and nutrients picked up by a desert wind called the Shamal. Carried to the Middle Eastern seas, these fertilizers help foster the growth of phytoplankton that in turn feed a multitude of fish, providing this giant colony of hungry birds a home in the desert.
But not all deserts are hot. 50 mile an hour winds blowing from Siberia bring snow to Mongolia's Gobi Desert. The Gobi covers